So today we're going to talk about gestational carriers. Who is a gestational carrier? Technically, a gestational carrier is just someone who carries a pregnancy for someone else. Who, who needs a gestational carrier? Anyone who wants to build their family but cannot physically carry the pregnancy themselves. So this could be um, someone who has lost their uterus to a hysterectomy, someone who has a health condition where their doctor says you really can't carry a pregnancy without becoming ill, or someone who is born without a uterus. So for example, a single male or two males planning to build their family can build their family through a gestational carrier and an egg donor. What's involved in the medical screening? Well, there are two main things we want to be certain of, that this is a process that will be low risk to the women carrying the pregnancies and also low risk to the baby they carry. In order to ensure that, we have to look at a woman's history and how they carried pregnancy before. So medical records from the prior pregnancy are reviewed to make sure that it was a low risk process with a healthy mom and a healthy baby at the end. Then we continue the evaluation by evaluating the uterus on a more detailed level. An ultrasound where we take a look at the inside surface where a pregnancy will implant, a child transfer to make sure that we can safely get an embryo up inside the uterus. And we also need to um, complete infectious disease and drug screening. These things are mandated by the societies that oversee um, reproductive health care and so we complete that blood and urine testing as well. What's involved in the psychological process? Well, it's interesting. When, when couples get married and plan to have kids, they um, have found out that they're compatible. And as we're entering this process, we're now bringing not only necessarily another individual, but maybe another couple into the process. So it's, I think it's really important that we understand that they've done that dating. They've, they've learned that their relationships, their values, and everything are in alignment because this can be a, a, a high intensity enterprise from an exciting standpoint and a challenging standpoint. But then there's also the legal component as well. What's involved in the legal? You know, the psychological makes sure that values and ideas are in alignment so that these um, so that people can collaborate well and legal makes sure that every potential eventuality has been thought through and written down how that will occur well that how that will transpire so for example the number of treatment visits that will be involved how many embryos will be transferred once pregnancy occurs how many prenatal visits what will happen if there are is a need for a procedure all of that needs to be discussed yes and people have to agree but then you have to write it down in a legal contract so that later when the pregnancy, <clears throat> excuse me, when the pregnancy is going well, um, the lawyer will then come back into the equation and write a pre-birth order so that the birth certificate will reflect the name of the intended parents and not the name of the gestational carrier. We spend a lot of time planning for the cycle, medical, psychological, legal plans, but then it's time for the IVF process. What is the IVF process for a gestational carrier? Right. Well, essentially the embryos have already been created. So the gestational carrier comes in and has gone through tests to make sure her uterine environment is adequate. Then she goes through the hormonal steps to just basically transfer the embryos. And then two weeks later, we look for a pregnancy test. And then if the pregnancy has occurred, those hormones that support pregnancy are necessary until about 10 weeks of pregnancy. We see the carrier usually around six, seven weeks. We're looking for a heartbeat. And once we see a beautiful heartbeat on that ultrasound, they are off to their OBGYN and we wait to hear good news. Yep. Healthy moms and healthy babies. <laughs>